our mutual friend Brian Clark, you know, him and I have shared lots of stories about the late great Brian Adams, obviously better known to WWE fans as Crush. Um, yeah, and he and he would he would become that third member of of Demolition. Um, what 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 I've always been curious. What was the rationale behind that? And also, what what was Brian like, kind of in outside of the ring? Obviously, we all know him inside as this larger than life tough competitor. But what was he like in in real life? Well, when uh, you know, we were really at the peak of our you know tag team, and uh, Axe got got real sick he almost died um really and he was in the hospital and we had you know probably two to three months of bookings already booked in advance with all these teams so there had to be another member of a tag team to keep that three months going and brian was just uh you know on the wwf's radar you know big guy he broke in in Japan. He was a good worker, a good guy from what everybody said. So they, they came up to me and said, hey, we got a new partner for you. What do you think of Brian Adams? And I never met Brian before. I met him at TV and we sat and talked. And right away, I liked him. I mean, he was he was just like us. He was just a really, really good guy. Mm-hmm. And he was willing to listen, you know, because it was already a, a veteran tag team. So we didn't want somebody that was to come and change anything so he came came right in and worked worked right with us mm. and he was one of the funniest guys that i've ever known outside the ring he ribbed people and there were good ribs you know uh phone calls that you know I, I mean i just can't remember even half the stuff he did but he was always a real quiet guy and then all of a sudden he'd get him going and he was just the funniest guy and the things he would do were just incredible. But uh what a what a really, really nice guy. Yeah, I think that, that echoes exactly what Brian's told me, just you know, the light life and soul of the party, a joy to be around in the locker room. Um yeah. just a, a a gentle giant. But also when you when you look at a kind of if you look at an archetypal kind of what would Vince McMahon be looking for out of a WWF superstar in 1990, I mean, they don't come much more out of the mold than you know, from Brian Adams, Steve, in terms, you know, he was just a, a giant right. of a man, great look, just, you know, you see superstar as soon as you see him. Yeah. But what, what a terrible situation for him to start off with though. You know, you, you got the demolition who's the top tag team been, you know, champions and everything. And all of a sudden you're a new guy in the business coming right in and, and having to make up, you know, a spot where ax isn't in there anymore. You're kind of breaking the tag team up and coming in there. He did a really, really good job for the position he got put in. Mm-hmm. And and he wasn't nervous or anything like that. He was, you know, it was kind of like when I came in, just excited to be there and excited to be in the top, top deal and very respectful for everybody. But, you know, when you got 50, 75 wrestlers in a territory that are there and all of a sudden you're there, it's hard to get respect for all those people where they all like you, you know, Mm -hmm. and it didn't take long and everybody loved crush. I mean, he was just that kind of a guy, you know, it could be tough, I guess, as you say, coming in new to a big money spot to an established marketed spot when there's other guys on the roster who I'm sure would have killed to have kind of slotted into Bill's role for a spell. Yep. Yep. It was a tough situation, but he, he did really well. I just hate that the demolition, you know, you know, broke up at the time and everything. And, and I don't really know how it happened or what it is. I, you know, I, I can't remember half the stuff that goes on anymore, but I think the demolition could, you know, could have been there forever. But yeah. you know, when the road warriors came in, they wanted the road warriors over and they didn't want the demolition over anymore. And that's, that's how it worked. Mm-hmm. You know, 